What is space farming? Now the proper definition of space farming is the cultivation of plants for food or material production on another planetary body. However, I also consider plants just grown in space, such as on the International Space Station, to be space farming. Now, why is space farming relevant? Well, astronauts need to eat, like how the plants are used and used on the International Space Station. But astronauts also need clean water and oxygen, and plants can provide all three. See, with the group of plant nutrition, I work on a project called Melissa, which is an initiative of the European Space Agency. And this project takes a regenerative approach at creating life support systems for future space missions with plant cultivation as a main component. See, plants can utilize waste such as human urine and CO2 to grow and provide food, oxygen, and water for astronauts. But space farming also has relevancy because it has direct applications and implications for farming practices on Earth. Regenerative space farming research gives us insights into how we may grow crops in more sustainable ways by using human excreta that has been transformed into safe fertilizers. How much of the space farming relies on bio waste? Well, currently the plants being grown on the International Space Station, very little relies on bio waste. Um, possibly some of the water used to, to water the plants was once urine and that has been, um, been processed, um, but very little is, you, is rely on bio waste at the current moment. But for future space missions that incorporate this Melissa concept, the goal would be to incorporate all bio wastes. So, cause as I mentioned in brief, the overall Melissa project is, or the goal of the Melissa project is to create a complete regenerative life support system that converts all CO2, all plant residues, excreta, et cetera, any waste into food, water, and oxygen for astronauts. So the inclusion of bio waste allows for an increased re resource reuse and recovery. Now, what kind of crops and plants can be cultivated in space? Well, in theory, many crops and plants can be grown in space as long as the correct environmental conditions are met. And these, this includes light, air, water, nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and many others, which all of these can either be manipulated or controlled in greenhouses or growth chambers on the surface of the moon, surface of Mars, or within a, within a, within a greenhouse structure on a space shuttle. And however, International Space Agency still consider several parameters when selecting potential plants for future space productions. Um, and these parameters include resiliency to stressors, um, edible and usable biomass production, so how much of the plant can be eaten or how much of the plant can be, be used um, as a fiber or as um, a building material of some sort, um, or, and also, of course, nutritional benefits for humans. Has anything been, in, been planted in space yet? Well, yeah, on the International Space Station, they've grown several plants, including lettuce, radishes, zinnias, sunflowers, soybean, and wheat. Um, there is a miniature growth chamber on the International Space Station called the Advanced Plant Habitat that has been used um, that has been that has been used for several growth experiments, and it's been key in allowing scientists to gather information about how plants grow in space and respond to these these particular conditions. Which leads me to what are the difficulties that plants face in space? Well, some of the challenges that plants face in space include exposure to radiation, microgravity or reduced gravity conditions, and nutrient availability. So radiation has been examined actually on seed germination that has been um, exposed over a long term. And this was from an experiment that actually seeds were attached to the outside of a, a space shuttle and then they were brought back you know, brought back to earth and then grown in comparison to obviously seeds uh, that did not undergo radiation or the type of radiation that we see um, on, on earth, which is, which is sunlight and um, these types of radiations. And unfortunately the germination, so the actual emergence of the root from the seed casing on the plants exposed to radiation in space um, performed worse. Um, but on the other hand, seeds and plants that have been grown in reduced gravity conditions or microgravity, such as on the International Space Station, or ones that have been exposed to artificial, um, artificial reduced gravity, which is um, simulated through rotation, rotation positioning systems here on Earth, 
um, actually have shown comparable germination rates um, and comparable growth rates. However, there's still a lot of, of research that's necessary to really determine the long-term and lasting effects of both radiation and microgravity. And thirdly, or another challenge that I will mention is nutrient availability, which is a topic I, I focus, a, a, I work a bit more closely with. And it's a challenge because there's no organic matter, there's no viable nutrients that we know of on the surface of the moon or Mars. See, organic matter is home to many microorganisms that convert and transform minerals into nutrients that are available for plants to take up through their root system. And so with no microbes creating these viable nutrients that then create the soil, there's really no, there's no nutrients for soil crop production. And this regulose, which is the surface covering on the moon or Mars, is also has or contains potential toxic elements for humans. So we have to think maybe in an alternative way. And so another option that may uh, be used to grow plants is hydroponic or soilless system, and potentially by using human waste products. And this is a challenge in itself, and a lot is still unknown, but this is the research that I focus on, which is how future astronauts and earthlings may use human waste products as fertilizers in hydroponic, hydroponic crop production. But overall, plants are extremely resilient and adaptive, and they usually find a way to, to adjust and survive. Do plants need to be modified genetically in space? Well, no, um, as I mentioned, plants can be quite resilient and we see that even non-genetically modified plants do well. However, I will say certain modifications or alterations may still be beneficial um, for space farming productions. For instance, certain modifications may increase a plant's response to stressors or make a plant more suitable to grow in a limited area. Um, in particular, there already have been modifications that actually reduce the height of the plant um, without altering the edible biomass or usable parts of the usable parts of the plants. And this aids in actually, you know, space utilization within a space habitat or within a space shuttle. And this is being actively researched. And doesn't it cost too much to transport plants to another planet? Well, yeah, any resupply mission is extremely expensive, including if we wanted to bring plants or fertilizers, all this, this is why having a circular system may be um, more cost effective, but also in the case of Mars, resupply missions are not so timely. See, there's a launch window of about, or there's a launch window really every 24 months. So resupply missions are not only costly, but they're hard to schedule and to rely on. And so this lends another importance of utilizing the resources that are available and reusing resources and wastes that are created. So space farming and having plants as a key component in future space missions is essential to reducing supply missions, resource use, and costs. And so I would just like to end by saying that space farming in a regenerative context aids in a more sustainable and resource efficient system. And especially for future interplan interplanetary missions, space farming will allow astronauts to supplement their food stores, aid in oxygen and water production, and provide actually great psychological benefits. And just as we witnessed during the COVID-19 crisis, many people all over the world turn to plants for food and comfort. And this will be the same for future space spaces.